Okay, this uh, investment is going to be on types of change and how things are related to one another. So the first thing I want to talk about is relationship statements. They um, tell how changing one variable changes another. And they're usually going to take this form. It might be something like this. As you get farther from the equator, your temperatures generally get colder. So we can write the relationship as th like this, as distance from the equator increases temperature decreases. So you're going to see something like this. As one variable increases, the other variable does what? It could increase or decrease or stay the same. But that's how these relationship statements are generally going to look. Then based on our statement, we have to decide if it's a direct or an inverse relationship. Um, now, here's an example of a direct. A liquid is heated over a burner and the temperature of the liquid is recorded every minute. As time increases, the temperature will do what? Well, we're heating it, so the temperature is going to increase. We're going to make a relationship statement and we say that one thing increases and the other increases. So if you see increases followed by increases again, they're doing the same thing. That's going to be what we're going to call a direct relationship. And a graph for that is generally going to tilt upward this way. Now the opposite, we're going to call an inverse. As you climb a mountain, it gets colder. So as altitude, altitude is height, so as altitude increases, the temperature decreases. So whenever you see a relationship that says increases, followed by decreases, we're going to call that an inverse relationship. And a graph of that's going to look like this. As, temperature, as altitude goes up, temperature goes down, so they're doing the opposite. And that's going to tilt downward like so. And the third type we need to be able to recognize is something that is cyclical. Alright, so here's an example of that. Okay, Each year the number of mosquitoes highest in the summer and drops to zero in the winter. This repeats year after year. So when you have a relationship that repeats like that, okay, it goes in a cycle, it's called a cyclical relationship. So for this one, our number of mosquitoes down here, this means winter, spring, summer, fall, then the next year it repeats again. We're going to have no mosquitoes in the winter, and then in the summer it's going to go up, it's going to peak in the summer and then go down in the fall, and in winter there's zero again. Then in the summer it might go up again, and then back down to zero in the winter. Then up again in the summer, back down to zero in the winter, then up again in the summer, and back down in the winter. So if it repeats itself like that, we're going to call that a cyclical relationship. So when you see a graph going up and down like that, we're going to call that cyclical. Now, the other thing we need to talk about is the rate of change. The definition of rate, rate is um, how fast something is occurring. So for an example, if I increase the temperature, evaporation will happen faster. If it's faster, it's got a greater rate. So seeing rate on a graph, um, greater slope means that you have a greater rate. Greater slope means that it is steeper. 
So if I look at this example, somebody took a black surface and a white surface exposed them to light. The light, they absorbed the energy and they got hotter, okay, and which showed a greater rate. Well, which one is steeper? The black line goes up faster than the white line, so it's steeper. So the black had a greater rate. steeper. And top of the next page. Now, calculating rate. This is another equation that is on the front of the reference table. The equation for it is going to be our rate is change in value. slightly different words. They say change in field value. I just think of change in value. All right, so up top. So here's an example. A cup of coffee is heated on a stove and allowed to cool on a countertop. The data for the temperature recorded below. So part A is when it was on the stove and it got hotter. And then part B is um, after it was allowed to cool off. Now, did it have a greater rate when it was heated or cooling? Well, remember, you can tell how fast it was going by the, the steepness. It's steeper for A. So um, it had a greater rate when heating. I can tell because it was steeper. Now we have to calculate the rate for section A and section B. All right, so for section A, I'm going to write down some data down here. All right, the temperature went from 10 for section A, started at 20, and went up to 80. Started at 20 and went up to 80. And the time for that was from 0 to, to 10. Um, minutes, and this was degrees Celsius. So our rate is going to be the change in value over time. To find a change, we subtract, so we're going to do 80 minus 20. Those are in degrees Celsius divided by the time that took was 10 minutes. If I do this on my calculator, 80 minus 20 is 60 degrees Celsius over 10 minutes. And 60 over 10 is 6 degrees Celsius per minute. So that's our rate. For section B, I'm going to write the data down again. I started at 80 and went down to 50 for the temperature. So the temp went from 80 down to 50 degrees Celsius. And the time was from 10 minutes to, have a look at this here. All right, the time was from 10 minutes to 25 minutes. So when we calculate our rate for this one, it's change in value over time. Now, I'm going to do this specific way. When I find my change in value, I do my final minus my starting. So I'm going to do 50 minus 80. And we're going to see what that does to this. And then we're going to uh, degree Celsius. Then we're going to divide that by the time. You have to be a little careful. Um, it doesn't say change in time on the bottom, but we really need to think of it that way. So I'm going to do 25 minus 10. OK, 
Okay, this may look familiar to you. It's just like doing slope in uh, math class. So 80, 50 minus 80 is minus 30 degrees Celsius over, and 25 minus 10 is 15 minutes. And then 30 divided by 15 is 2, so we're going to get negative 2 degrees Celsius per minute. Now what the negative means in that case is that the temperature was going down. So a negative rate means it's decreasing. And you'll see that when you have it tilting down, you should end up with a negative rate. We said that the rate was going to be greater, up here we said this, that the rate was going to be greater in section A, and it was. It was 6 degrees Celsius per minute compared to 2. Okay? Um, so, at the end of this lesson, you should be able to look at a graph and identify if it is um, a direct, cyclical, or inverse type of relationship. Or if somebody gives you the description of a relationship, you should be able to tell if it's direct or inverse or cyclical and know what the graph would look like. And you also need to be able to calculate rates.